It's the size of a school bus, and these pictures that were taken just less than a month ago by other satellites orbiting Earth, almost like documenting some twisted fate they could have one day. Let's bring in Dr. Leroy Chow, a retired NASA astronaut and former International Space Station commander. Dr. Chow, what has this satellite been doing all these years? And, and truly, the bottom line, are there any risks that we have here on Earth? This satellite was launched by the European Space Agency, as you pointed out, many years ago. It performed its mission. It was observing the sun, specifically solar max, uh, when the sun is emitting uh, most of its particles. It's about a 12-year cycle. And now, at the end of life, about 13 years ago, it used its remaining propellant to come down into a lower orbit where it would be captured by the Earth's atmosphere and eventually come down and break apart. And so that's the phase we're seeing now, the last part, where it's coming down into the thicker part of the atmosphere sometime this week, and it will pretty much all burn up. It's expected that it will either all burn up or maybe a few small pieces might survive the reentry into the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, but it's really not a cause for concern. The, the calculated odds by the European Space Agency is about one in one and a half billion that some individual will, would be affected by this. Okay, those chances are real low, and that's reassuring. I, I, do, I do, though, recently, and, and this happens once in a while, right? Uh, a satellite aiming for Earth. I, just last year, I'm sure you remember it, the NASA's radiation budget satellite, it was barreling back here toward home, and there was a lot of attention surrounding that one. It hit the Bering Sea. Everyone's okay, I mean, but it did crash into the sea. There's no reason to think that this ESA satellite would be, would be any different, right? Well, that's right. And, and, you know, it's a big planet. Most of it's covered by water. Uh, we do, most people nowadays and for, for the, the past several years, have designed their satellites responsibly to be disposed of uh, responsibly and, and in a controlled manner. And so, for example, at the end of life, spacecraft may do a deorbit burn to try to target what we call the spacecraft or satellite graveyard in the Indian Ocean, far away from shipping lanes, far away from any human activity. And so you remember several years years ago, the space station mirror came down in a similar fashion, and mm. uh, it did splash down near that region. The problem is, once you get down into the thicker part of the atmosphere, it gets a little bit less predictable exactly where it's going to break down or, you know, break up and come down due to the variations in the Earth's atmosphere as you get down uh, to that point. But generally speaking, there's very little chance of it affecting you. And so uh, with, a, with the exception of a couple of major uh, cases over the years, um, it's really not a concern. Let's, let's stay in space, though, because while you were commanding the ISS, how, how did you guys treat and, I guess, bring awareness to debris in space? Were, was there a need to, to dodge it? You, you, you had mentioned this graveyard. There, there's general protection that the ISS has towards space junk and debris, or, or not so much? Oh, absolutely. All spacecraft and satellites have some shielding because micrometeoroid debris is the biggest concern of any spacecraft in orbit, including the ISS. And so the space shuttle used to routinely come back with dings in the windows and also in the heat shield tiles. But most of those dings were from tiny little basically grains of sand particles, you know, rocks and things like that, or bits of paint flex from uh, you know, other spacecraft that have gone through the region. And so uh, it is a concern. We do drill for an International Space Station mission on what to do if we do have an impact that comes through the shielding, pierces the hull, and then we've got to run a, a you know, not dissimilar from a submarine drill, sealing hatches, isolating uh, where the leak is, making sure you don't isolate yourself from the escape path. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, ultimately, if we have to, we can abandon ship. But um, we've had nowhere near that uh, kind of an, an incident. And, but, uh, you know, it's something that we are concerned about. And, and we don't have much time, but I, I'm wondering, as we head the next several decades, I mean, is space junk and debris going to be an increasing problem? I mean, I know that I understand there are some regulations that countries can follow. So a dead satellite, rocket parts are, are discarded properly. But is this a, a, a growing problem, you'd say? Uh, yeah, generally speaking, yes, because we are launching more and more satellites, more and more commercial companies are getting in on the act of getting their satellite constellations up. However, as I mentioned earlier, most, if not all, current manufacturers and developers of satellites are working on responsible ways of disposing of their vehicles after they reach end of life. That is, planning to deorbit them with some leftover propellant to try to bring them down in this area in the Indian Ocean that is called the, the satellite graveyard. So, 
we're going to see a big increase in tempo or it's con continuing to increase tempo of satellite launches. But at the same time, uh, we're going to bring be bringing most of those back in a controlled manner. We appreciate the reassurance. Certainly the case, especially when you talk uh, about a satellite that the size of a, of a school bus, as they do range in, in sizes. But former NASA astronaut and ISS commander Dr. Leroy Chow, thanks for joining us on Weather Command.